Since I didn't get any gold from my last extraction, I got a ton of computer chips to make another attempt. There are several different types of components here, and many of them have plastic casings, so this is going to be tough. I obtained these parts from a friend who does professional salvage and reselling. It's very interesting work, and I highly recommend checking him out. So to begin this extraction I am going to test every different type of component for the presence of gold so I don't waste any time on junk. To do this I first need to make aqua regia by mixing hydrochloric and nitric acid. This solution is added to one of each type of sample and they are heated. Any gold present will dissolve and turn the solution yellow. So far it does seem like every component contains at least some gold, but this isn't definitive. To definitively test for gold I am going to do something called a Stannis test. To do this I add a small amount of each sample solution to a bit of tin chloride. Gold and tin bind to form a dark purplish matrix, and so any samples containing gold should turn a dark purplish black color. Based on this test, every sample seems to contain gold, but some contain far more than others. The pins were stripped by this process, and obviously contain gold. The pieces with the least plastic and highest gold content were separated, and weigh 375 grams. To these I add concentrated hydrochloric acid to dissolve any iron or lesser metals that are present. These are heated and allowed to cook for a while. To all the pins attached to a plastic backing I added HCl and peroxide to attempt to dislodge the plated gold. I did the same for these plastic connectors. After a while the solutions all turned green, which is almost certainly dissolved iron. The HCL somehow dissolved the plastic on these connectors and is going to be hellish to remove. For now I'm just going to focus on the high gold pins and now that the solution is saturated in iron I'm going to give these a wash. To do this I first pass the iron chloride solution through a small filter to catch any gold flakes. Next I add distilled water to my pins and stir vigorously to remove as much iron and acid as possible. This is all poured into a bigger filter and rinsed until the filtrant is clear. Finally I transfer them all back to the 1000 milliliter beaker and I keep the filter paper in case it caught any gold flakes. Next I add dilute nitric acid to the pins which will dissolve any copper, silver, or nickel that might be present. Once heat is applied it begins to bubble, and the solution slowly turns blue with dissolved copper. Bubbling slows down I add a bit more nitric acid, but in general I want to use a minimal amount. Eventually the reaction stops, and I wash them again the same way I did before. This time the filter definitely caught some gold flakes. Follow for part two to see the rest of the process. To resume extracting gold from my computer components, I put all these pins back on heat and add fresh hydrochloric acid. The HCl will remove any iron, and peroxide is added with the HCl to remove copper. This process with the filtering seen earlier is repeated until the solution runs clear. Here I am placing a piece of copper into my nitrate solution from the previous step to test whether my pins contain silver. If silver was present it would immediately precipitate on the copper. Since nothing happens, there's no silver. Here you can see the plastic coated pins shed a lot of gold flakes, but to isolate it I still need to remove all this plastic. 
To do this I dumped it, picked out the metal, and boiled the pieces in Perenna solution to vaporize any stuck on plastic. This is what I'm left with, and I'll process these pieces the same as the rest. Now I'm stuck with the nightmare of extracting the gold from the huge amount of plastic coated pieces remaining. To do this I first tried to remove the plastic itself. My first idea was using sulfuric acid, and when that failed I tried burning. Since acid and fire didn't work I tried organic solvents which did even less. My final attempt was using Piranha solution which can vaporize any organic material on contact. This worked to remove some plastic as you can see, but the amount that would have been needed to remove it all would have been prohibitively expensive. However, when doing this I found that the bubbles along with acid flaked off a lot of gold which gave me an idea. I started by breaking my remaining plastic components to pieces and loaded them into a large beaker. I then mixed HCl and 3% peroxide in a 2 to 1 ratio and poured it over the pieces. The acid along with the oxygen from the peroxide worked to agitate the gold off of the metal it's plated to. To speed things up I put aquarium air stones at the bottom to provide extra oxygen and agitation. With all the remaining pieces that couldn't fit in the beaker I simply decided to manually cut off every gold pen that I could. These were all loaded into another beaker to be processed like the rest. To these I added hydrochloric acid with peroxide and tried boiling to flake away as much gold as possible. After an hour barely anything has happened, so I decided to just dissolve them completely gold and all. To do this I added even more HCl along with some nitric acid to produce aqua regia which will dissolve any metal. After the nitric acid is added the gold quickly begins to melt and toxic nitrogen dioxide gas is produced. This is allowed to boil for a while while I go back to processing the other pieces. When I checked back in on the pens I started with I noticed that a lot of gold has started to flake off, which I collect in a filter with each successive rinse. After my plastic pieces have spent a few days bubbling much of the gold has flaked off and I need to collect it. To do this I dump it all into a kitchen strainer and transfer everything that collected in this bottom tray to a beaker. After that I use water to rinse any gold flakes off of every single piece individually. After my rinsing step I'm left with a ton of gold flakes in the bottom of my tray and I pass both these and the contents of the beaker through a vacuum filter. And this is just one of the many filters I collected filled with gold. There is still a good deal of work left to do before I get solid gold, follow to see part 3. Day 3 of extracting gold from computer pins. Since using HCl and peroxide seemed to be the best method for flaking away gold plating, I repeated this process multiple times on all my pins. After each wash the solution was filtered to collect the gold flakes. After some testing I found that using calcium hypochlorite worked similarly as well, and only required a fraction as much acid. The only issue with this method is that small amounts of chlorine gas is released on addition, and so proper ventilation is necessary. Regardless, the solution of 5% hypochlorite to 5% HCl became my go-to for the rest of the flaking process. This was done in several beakers simultaneously, which also required me to set up multiple filters running constantly. Each time gold was collected, and I eventually filled up a large Ziploc bag with coffee filters. Once very little gold remained plated to any of the pens I transferred all the filters I had collected during this project to a 1000 milliliter beaker. To this I added more peroxide and hydrochloric acid. 
This would dissolve a large amount of gold since there was no other metals to attack. This process also put any copper or nickel chloride collected during this process into solution and ate away at the filters themselves. This was brought to a light boil for five minutes before I passed it all through a small colander to separate out all the big pieces. The filtrant was then further filtered to remove any bits of paper and transferred to another large beaker. The green color of this solution is due to copper and nickel impurities which will be left in solution once the gold has been precipitated. To precipitate the gold out I add sodium metabisulfite until the solution turns very dark, indicating the formation of solid gold. Gold purified in this manner is 99.999% pure, which is far purer than any other method as well as far more environmentally friendly. While that batch was reacting I added my filters back to the big beaker along with fresh HCl as well as some concentrated nitric acid. This solution of aqua regia would completely dissolve all remaining gold in these filters, as well as digest the filters themselves into pulp. This slurry was again filtered the same way as before, but because this solution is nearly pure gold it is bright yellow rather than green. As a reminder, gold dissolved in aqua regia actually exists as a bright yellow acid called chloroauric acid. Like before, I transfer this filter to a beaker for processing. This time, however, will require an extra step. Since nitric acid was used, excess nitric acid must be first neutralized with urea before reduction with sodium metabisulfite can take place. To achieve neutralization, I simply add urea until the solution stops foaming before I add metabisulfite. When the metabisulfite is finally added, the solution first turns green due to some impurities before eventually turning very dark like before. A second rinse of the pulp is processed the same way, and by this point the purity is high enough that the solution doesn't change green. All three batches along with a fourth one done off camera are left overnight to allow all the gold powder to settle to the bottom for easier collection. And here it is the next day. All my pure gold has been reduced out of solution while the nickel and copper impurities remain in suspension. In the next and final part I'll separate out the pure gold, wash it, and melt it into a bar. Today I am going to finish refining pure gold from computer parts. I begin this final phase by transferring all the precipitated gold to a single beaker and washing it thoroughly. At this point all the remaining water is dried off to leave behind a brown powder. This is pure gold dust and I scrape as much as I can into a small ceramic dish to melt it down. To do this I simply hit it with a torch and while it's heating up I'll answer a few questions I've gotten about this process. First, the mass of this powder was 3.8 grams. The current market price of gold is $60 per gram which makes this worth $128. This entire process cost me $28 in materials and took right around 8 hours, meaning that I made $25 profit per hour. This is disregarding the cost of the computer parts themselves, which again I got from a friend. Even so, $25 per hour is far less than I make at my real job and this was all done for fun. I do believe, however, that this process could be made truly profitable given you have infinite access to computer scrap. I went into this blind, and part 1 as well as the bulk of part 2 of this series was trial and error. If you were to do this at the scale of a 5 gallon bucket and only follow this process from the HCl plus peroxide bubbling step onward you could achieve this in half the time and at half the materials cost. 
Scale is key, and mine was kept very small. A second question I got a lot was on disposal of waste. For this specific process I actually kept 100% of the waste and I'm going to later check if it contains any gold I might have missed. Generally though I would eliminate this type of waste by simply boiling it down and storing the metal salts. You never know when you'll need pounds of copper chloride. Anyway, now that that's done let's go back to the gold. I continued heating and at a certain point it got so hot that it shattered my disc before the gold finished melting. I transferred this to a new dish and kept heating until the gold formed a little glowing bead. This is left to cool down for a half hour, and then I pulled it off with pliers. And here it is. My final little bead of pure 24 karat gold. As a final step, I weigh the bead to get a final precise mass. This tells me that my final piece weighs in at 3.57 grams and worth about $215. The remaining quarter of a gram is still in the beaker as I couldn't get it all out. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this series or video if you are watching this on YouTube. Follow for more. And become a patron if you have a specific video you'd like to see me make.